Hi and welcome to Text Nation TV. This week it's pretty much everything you've seen for the last two weeks. Yeah. So it's going to be Amazon, it's going to be Nokia, it's going to be Motorola, Apple, and unfortunately Apple. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, hi and welcome to episode number 50. Finally, we've made it. 50. That's right, yeah. it's been two whole years and Five centennial. finally made it to 50. So uh, it's been a little while since we've had a full on episode, but we wanted to wait because there were so many announcements over the last few weeks. Uh, I do want to hit one quick announcement, just a quick little sentence because we're not really going to cover it, but it was announced that Nintendo Wii U was finally announced November the 18th. Prices are out there. You can look it up. It's available. It will be coming soon. Other than that, that's all you're going to hear about for Nintendo. <laughs> so let's start back two weeks ago. Let's mm -hmm. rewind the clocks. Uh, September is cell phone month, basically. Yeah, everybody just stepped up to the plate because they were scared of Apple. Yeah. Which will... I don't want to say scared, but... I, I, I will say that they were well prepared. There's just a lot of phones that are out there that are up to par, going above and beyond yeah. Apple. So And everyone already knew what the Apple phone was going to look like. <laughs> and there were no surprises. None. At so all. yeah. This is gonna be one of the longer episodes. It's not gonna be under 15 minutes, I can guarantee you that right now. So just to let you know right here, right now, we're gonna go extensive into each one of these phones so that you know what your choices are for your holiday season if it's time for you to upgrade like it is for me. So we're gonna start off with the first one that was first announced two weeks ago was Nokia. Nokia came to the game and theirs was kind of leaked a little bit beforehand as well. Yep. Uh, they had the Lumia 920. The only thing that I didn't like was there's no specific date. Yeah. Both for the 920 and for the 820. For those of you following, there was an 800 before and obviously the 900 before. So this is the upgrade to these. These are going to be carrying Windows Phone 8. Uh, there will be no upgrades for Windows Phone 7. So for the 900, you will not be able to get Windows Phone 8, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. I bought into it as well, but mine got stolen. So you yeah. lucked out. <laughs> I lucked out. Uh, <laughs> they are going to be upgrading to 7.8, and there's some news about whether or not they are going to take user feedback or they're not going to take user feedback. There were some stories on that. We don't know, but you'll get a slight upgrade, but you will never get to the Windows Phone 8. They're basically making the tiles smaller, more compact, so that you can get more on the front screen. It's no longer just the like six to eight tiles that can scroll. I don't like that. It's like 16 to 32. I like the I like the old look better. It was really sharp to have, you know, make it big enough to where it's crisp, you can read it, yeah. scroll it up and down. Well, maybe a 900, if you were in the market for a phone, maybe a Lumia 900 would be, be for you because for some places you can get it for zero dollars free, yeah. on contract obviously, or $49 on contract, kind of just kind of depending who you work with. And some chicken Peru, she may hook you up with a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's still posting photos. It's so annoying. But anyway, um, they're they're touting the pure view technology behind the camera. It's an 8.7 megapixel, not just 8 megapixel hey. like everybody else. It's an 8.7 megapixel. It allows in more light. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better at low light. There were some problems. I don't know if you saw this or not, but there were some problems with the announcement and the video that they showed versus what was actual photo footage and... Yeah, I heard they got in a little little trouble for that. Uh, you know what? I, I'm down with it because they took it upon themselves to say, hey, look, all right, you busted us. We know that wasn't, yeah, it was a photo shoot. It wasn't the Lumia taking the photos. All right, we, you got us. Was it the 808? Uh, I, I, no, 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 the 808 is the 41 megapixel. This had nothing to do with it. It's just the fact that they took like DSLR photos and said, this is photos that are from the Lumia 920 or the 820. Well, everyone does that in commercials, you know, screenshot simulated. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing the was, there was no little screenshot <laughs> simulated. There was no little thing. There's no little guy down there holding up a sign. <laughs> so yeah, they, they missed out on that. So apparently they kind of got into trouble about that. And so I wouldn't say trouble, but a lot of users are like, hey, what the crap you said, because there was the image stabilization video mm -hmm. where they show people on bikes riding by and they're like, watch this like one frame. And it's like, 
one to two frames out of a 30 second little one second thing so you literally have to like get it down to the two frames and go yeah there's a guy in a shot in a van in the reflection it's like wow these people really caught that but it, nokia came back and said all right we got it you, you know we'll show you real ones you got us <laughs> so they actually went through and got like guys from the verge and a couple other uh notable uh source uh news sources and said look we're busted, we're fine, but we want you to test it in real life. It really is this good. So they called them out at like 1 o'clock in the morning. They all went out and took low light shots. Turned out great. So, you know, good for you, Nokia, for letting us know, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you got us. You know, so it's not the 41 megapixel pure view camera from the 808. It is the pure view technology, just meaning that they're allowed to have more light come into the camera. It's just basically a specialized camera. Uh, via you know the Carl Zeiss lens and then the camera technology behind it and it's just a combination of really good screen it's a 4.5 inch screen it now comes in a 32 gig no removable memory still um, you've got your speakers on the bottom it looks almost exactly like the E900 uh, as before and same thing with the 820 the only difference really I saw and don't quote me on this but the only thing that I saw really big a difference was I believe the 820 was like a 4.3 inch screen and the 920 was a uh, 4.5 inch screen mm -hmm. and the 820 has removable backs so that you can change colors you can do like red yellow blue black your basic you know colors so that was kind of cool uh i don't think that the same ram that's running in the 920 is what's running in the 820 the 920 obviously based upon numbers logic that's yeah. the better phone uh, it's it's still a really good phone and what I like about it is we were looking at this earlier it is a get this you've got a 332 ppi which is pixels per inch which is higher than the iPhone and their um, retina display mm -hmm. higher than the Motorola HD Razer Max which we're gonna talk about and also even the you know the newest stuff from Apple so a lot of good came out of Nokia even though they had their little stumble I think it's a really great phone. The only problem is, again, no announcement date. There are rumors of late October, early November, um, somewhere around in that range right now. Nothing firm just yet, but 4G LTE. I think one of the coolest things, and I told you about this, was the wireless charging. You set your little thing up, you just drop it on your dock. Yeah. I mean, I love that. We loved it with the Palm Pre, uh, not so much the Palm Pixie. We've <laughs> talked about that before. Um, but and there was another there was another phone that did the wireless charging and for the life of me I cannot remember what it is but I mean wireless charging to me just to be able to just go whoop, and your phone's charging great so Nokia if I could just have the patience and I don't I would so get you right now but I just don't have the patience to wait that long so out of out of five stars I give you a good four and a half I would probably give you a five if it were available, but another thing is it's still a little bit thicker than what the Galaxy S3 is. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go, you know, more towards the Galaxy S3 side about when it comes to phone. So we'll let we'll let you get to that Galaxy in a minute here. <laughs> Next one that was uh, released recently, well, not released, but the story was released: uh, the Droid Razor Max HD. Yeah. Also, there was a Droid. Uh, was it then? Max. Droid Razor, Razor HD, HD the, and then the Droid Razor M, which M. is the smaller version. Yeah. So there were three new phones for Motorola just after the Nokia announcement. We're going to talk about the daddy, the Razor. And everybody knows you hear Razor, you think, man, that was a great phone. Yep. Why can't I have that phone back? Yeah. Because now if you pull out a flip phone, people are going to go, oh, I don't trust that guy. <laughs> Why does he have a flip phone? That's kind of shady. I'm not going to do business with him. <laughs> Motorola heard you and brought out the Droid Razor Max HD. Uh, only s couple setbacks I see is that it's only on Verizon. Yeah, because it's a Droid phone, so it's only going to be Now that we have 4G LTE, you know, they stick around with AT&T, see what, see what happens. Uh, like the Lumia, no release date is set, no price is set, which that irritates me a lot because, you know, you want to know what you want to save up for to get it because, like Rusty here, you may not have any patience and think, you're not going to tell me. I'm going to buy this one. And then you come out like $100 cheaper than this one. And, <laughs> and then, you, and then you know, you're just stuck. <laughs> you know, like that commercial where everybody's dropping their phones and acid and everything. 
but it's on Android 4.0. Actually, they if you take a look at that, take a look at your specs on this. Guys, get this 4.04. 4. 4. So it'll be the latest update of the allowed. With the point four, like <laughs> like his little camera there has got the what the point seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, it's got um the uh, the eight meg eight megapixel camera, like what's pretty much gonna be common these days. Yeah. So uh, if you've seen if you've seen some screenshots, which we'll throw some up here, great. Great looking phone. The blacks are dark. The, pretty much like the Lumia's display. Just great looking phone. Big enough, not ridiculously big. You know, not like a Note, which that I you want. I still like the Note. You know, still <laughs> five by two. You know, in the size there. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, twelve eighty by seven twenty. Standard twelve uh, seven twenty screen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, three hundred twelve PPI. A little under the three. Uh, 32 that the yeah. Lumia is running gig storage, but micro SD, so yeah, it has removable. removable, so you can add on more. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, your Lumia is only Bluetooth 3.1. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but still, a good looking phone. Sorry, I can't talk to you about release date or price. Maybe before we put the video up, they'll sneak something. I'm, I'm sure that they're going to be the $199, $299 price like most of the other smartphones are. Unless they go the Lumia route, which the Lumia, the original $900 went $99 when it yeah. first came out. And that's the reason why I got it. I'm pretty sure the days of the phones being $599 and up are over. Yeah, unless it's unlocked, which, you know, for those of you yeah. uh, that purposely buy those phones for that particular reason, so you can carry it with you wherever you go. Uh, but at this day and age, everybody goes through phones like they go through, you know, contacts or they go through, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I do. It's it's like every 12 months I got to have a new phone and it's getting shorter every year. I, I swear it's almost down to six months. Uh, but at, at this point, you know, uh, I, I think that them not releasing a date puts more like... Eh. Yeah, it makes people like you just kind of... Uh, <laughs> I got money. Exactly. Take, take, yeah. Take my money. I will say this though, with them releasing, and we'll talk about the little brother real quick, the Droid Razor M, and nobody knows what the M is for. It has nothing to do with the processor. It has nothing to do with the camera. Maybe Motorola. it's mobile. I don't know. It would just be weird to be Droid Razor Motorola. But anyway, it's the little guy, and he's 4.5 inch. Where the two big brothers are 4.7 inch, so it's a little bit smaller. Maybe mini. Maybe mini. Who knows. But, you know, you've got three brand new phones across the board. You've got the main. The good thing about the, or I said the mini, the M, See? is it's on. available now. Yes. You can get it right now for $99 on brand new two-year contract. But why would you get the M with the Droid Razor Max HD? Some people. It's right there. <laughs> some people. It's Motorola messing with you. <laughs> some people, like me, maybe want to have the newest whatever it is. And they can't wait for the newest new. They got to get the newest, with, you know, <laughs> without getting the latest. So, uh, so you just stack them up like dominoes. Yeah. And knock them over to get the next Maybe one. Maybe Motorola and Nokia just had a conglomerate meeting and said, "Look, we're gonna release these. Like we're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, Samsung and Apple." Or... <laughs> and that's a whole pissy match on its own. Yeah. But I mean, but while they're doing that, distracting <laughs> each other, we're just go ahead and really, you know, exactly. Bring them so. Out. We're again rumors of that showing up in November as well. For those, uh, I'm assuming, like I said, don't quote me on this until official prices come out. Yeah. But I'm assuming one ninety nine, two ninety nine, uh, depending on how they release them. I'm sure because I actually talked a friend of mine into getting the Droid Razor Max, not the HD, just the regular Droid Razor Max, based upon the battery life. That was a little earlier this year, and now the Droid Razor Max HD is out. So. It's, I mean, that's the thing with smartphones these days. There's new ones every three to six months. I, I mean, know. you can't really stay on top of it anymore. I mean, you might be cool for three months. They should just let you buy, like, the motherboard, and you just <laughs> keep adding your own yeah. and, faces and backs. Exactly. I mean, at this point. Uh, but I, uh, good looking phone. Latest, ver uh, latest version of Android. Yeah. 4G LTE. Yeah. We're getting a call right now. We're going to let it go because. It's all about you right now. Uh, good screen, uh, great looking phone. Um, yeah. Can't tell you when it's coming out, what it's gonna cost. All right, so now that we've got the two from last week talked about, I'm gonna talk about one that I really, really like, 
that was out before everything. It was actually announced earlier this summer before everybody else got started. Yeah. And so it wasn't in the past two weeks. This one's actually been out for a little bit. And this is before, like I said, everybody. So we're going to hold on to the Apple before we get to it because you and I can both kind of confer on this one. But because my contract is up, I have now an ability to upgrade. I have multiple options. Obviously, the new iPhone 5 just was released and or talked about and about to be released. We will talk about that in a minute. But Samsung Galaxy S3. Have you seen this phone in hand? Yes, at Best Buy. Okay, you saw it at Best Buy. Did you play with it for a minute? Yeah, I put our videos up on all of them. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's and the awesome. note. That's awesome. So I went today because, like I said, I'm due for an upgrade. Was not, not surprised by anything Apple. I was not happy with it. I was very bored. I, I just wasn't as excited about it. I guess because of all the leaks beforehand, we knew. We knew what it was. There was nothing new. There was nothing, one more thing. You know, there just wasn't the pizzazz. And so I, I guess, <laughs> no pizzazz. number one, I've had, I had the iPhone 2G, which was the original with the metal back. I had the iPhone 3G. I had the iPhone 4. So for going on four to five years, I've had iPhones. I'm kind of sick of it. That's my first problem. My second problem is everywhere you go, everybody has an iPhone. Kids, old people, people at work, they all have iPhones. And it drives me up the wall. I used to be, you know, the cool guy with the iPhone because nobody. You're ready to go back to the slider, aren't you? <laughs> well, I. I'm just tired of being in with everybody. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know. I hate to be that. And so I've got to step away from Apple and I've got to walk away. So Samsung Galaxy S3, 4.7 inch screen. Uh, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, 4 point, uh, yeah, 4.7 inch seven. screen, 306 pixels per inch. It's not the same retina display, but it is still a beautiful screen. I think they use the IPS technology behind the colors on it. It's Android based, it's Galaxy. You know it's gonna be great because Samsung, anything they put underneath the Galaxy flag is a beautiful phone. The Galaxy One, the Galaxy Two, uh, there's a couple other Galaxies in there uh, as well that they made that were, you know, I think the Galaxy S2A or something like that. I don't remember all the specifics. There were so many different models, but anything they put underneath the Galaxy, they take time for design. And I remember watching Molly Wood dropped this one when she, her first episode of her new show on CNET, drops it in water, mm -hmm. let it sit there for like five to 10 seconds. It stayed on, finally cuts itself off. She takes it out, lets it dry for a few hours. Bam, it works. Throws it in the freezer. Bam, it works. Throws it in the fire. Bam, it works. Well, not fire, but like she throws it in a hot place and it works. And like everything, she dropped it. She threw it. She every, And I was just like, I want that phone. And so I finally went and touched one today, played with it for about five minutes, and I was like, that's all I needed. That's it. It's skinny. It's, it's not going to you know, crack and break like an iPhone will with the, all that glass, except for now the iPhone now has a metal back. So I really had two or three options for my next upgrade. It was either iPhone 5, which I wanted to wait for to see if there was going to be anything different, which there wasn't, mm -hmm. the Galaxy S3, or the Nokia Lumia 920. Lumia 920, still no date, rumored November. Galaxy S3 looks great. iPhone 5, wasn't surprised. So I'm kind of Galaxy S3. I think I'll get one tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. But so let's talk about. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Let's talk about the new iPhone 5. Available on, get this, ATT, Sprint, Verizon. But not only that, C Spire and Cricket who are announcing these on launch. This is not, you know, after the fact. These, they're not just now getting the iPhone 4. They are on launch getting these. So this is ridiculous that there's so many carriers gonna be carrying the iPhone 5. They are really pushing for some high sales numbers. Oh yeah. I think personally, not gonna be it this time. I think the iPhone 4S will be their last top of the line. Yeah, I think they're ready for a new clientele. So uh, what, let's, let's, let's kind of rewind. Um, let's go back to the beginning of the Apple announcement. We, we knew. Mm -hmm. Was there anything in this announcement that you did not already know pre the Nano stuff and all, all the iPod stuff about the phone? Was there anything that we missed that we didn't know about on the phone beforehand? 
I think the only thing we didn't know is what the connector was going to look like. No, we even knew what the connector was going to look like. They, that was months before. Of what the picture and the of the actual connector itself. I knew yep. the the port was going to be smaller, but the actual you were talking about the uh, uh, changeover from the big thing. No, not the changeover. Just what it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody had they had the cables. They were they were t telling us, you know. Apple has this nine pin connector and it's Sorry, apparently I was gone that day. Yeah, well, yeah, they've had it. There there was literally nothing that was Well, to surprising. me, physically, I haven't seen Okay, yeah, yeah. the smaller cable like the cable itself. I knew the port was going to be and they put the headphone jack on the bottom. Yeah. But let's talk about some good things before we uh, rip into them. <laughs> so, uh 8 megapixel camera, which is a lot better, but now standard. Still the same thing from the 4S. So, well, supposedly we, better. We don't have 4S. Yeah, it's supposedly know, so. better because they put a sapphire piece of glass on there instead of a regular piece of glass. I don't, I don't, I didn't get all that, but okay. Uh, unless Carl Zeiss put it in there himself, <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, the A6 chip, which dual core from all that we know, we don't know any benchmarks until we get our hands on it next week. So yeah, nobody knows anything so, about it. It's bigger in number, <laughs> so it should be at least a little better. Yeah. Um, Really trying to think of good things here. Um, <laughs> four, 4G LTE. Yeah, which we knew was coming because it's yeah. already in the iPad or the new iPad, which we all thought was going to be maybe the new iPhone. Or it's now official. It's iPhone five. So which they leaked hours beforehand on their website, which was funny. That's pretty much it. That's all you got for good. Really? The metal back? No longer full glass back. So if you drop it on the back, it scratches instead of shatters the glass. <laughs> Oh, come on. No one keeps an iPhone naked. Okay, thinner. It's thinner. It's it's lighter. It weighs All less. Right. Yeah, the screen's bigger. I'll give them that. You get like 226 more pixels. That's like a whole other row of pixels. <laughs> Your Lumia's got 332. Okay, yeah, so here we go. iPhone has 326. Let's, let's, let's rip into this because <laughs> I just have nothing to say. Guys... When you see a 4.7 inch screen, a 5 inch screen on the Note, when you see these bigger Android phone screens and everybody is buying them, everybody is buying them, why would you not go a little bit bigger than 4 inches? Maybe 4.2, maybe 4.3, you know, get, get, get out there. Their, their thought was, we measured the hand and... <laughs> said four, a four inch screen is the best choice to hold in your hand. Which is the, they were holding something in their hand all right. It's just the <laughs> biggest bunch of BS, this whole thing. You know, they put that little teaser out, 12, and it made a five. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty, I, I love that. Yeah. I love marketing. Yeah. Great marketing. You know, okay, this is gonna be something cool. Yeah. And then they, Let's, just, let's what, go the whole thing. What? Let's start. Let's start off with the whole no, thing. Let, welcome to welcome to the e keynote. <laughs> hey, you guys who had the who had the Nano watch, and you know we were thinking. Well, what? you're going to the end of the keynote. The beginning of the keynote was sales figures, how many stores we have, uh, yeah. the usual. Yeah. You know the usual. Then it was here's the iPhone five. Oh yeah, they kind of. They, they went backwards. They went backwards. Yeah, they normally, the iPhone would have normally been the last thing, you know, but okay, so iPhone 5, they tell us about it. I think because the rest of the products were so terrible, <laughs> people would have left after they, <laughs> after they saw it. Look. What did you say not 10 minutes before we got started? I wish we, oh yeah, I wish we could have been invited to that so we could walk out. It was that bad. It was literally that bad. I, didn't, I haven't watched the, the, the video yet. I'll need to download it and kind of watch and, crowd reaction. And we love Apple products. I have pretty much everything except for an Apple TV. Which, <laughs> which I have. Which I'm probably going to get a Mac Mini and just turn that into a media center Yeah. for my TVs. Yeah. So, you know, we're not going to go against Apple like, you know, you know, we're pro Android or something like that. I might. I might. <laughs> After getting my Galaxy S3, I probably will. <laughs> that, and if I have Sean Corcoran one more time tell me something great about Apple, I'm going to punch him in the eye with a pitchfork. Uh, I should have a little something on the side there. <laughs> okay. 
So, all right, well, let's 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 skip over the iPhone five because obviously you did want to talk about the Nano, the iPod Touch. Tell us, tell us what your thoughts were after they got done with the whole, we already knew about the iPhone 5, yeah. and you see the new Nano, and you see the new iPod Touches. What are your first experiences? What are your first thoughts? I thought it was a joke. Really? When they showed the Nano, and it looked like... <laughs> it looked like a Lumia that was put in the microwave <laughs> and just kind of shrank down. It also looked like those... Um, those... Uh, PDAs that came out in the early 90s. Oh, wow. Like the before, like Palm Pilot, they made like the small ones that were like black and white, but they had that same square shape, <laughs> the same looking icon button. What I didn't get was the home button. If you looked at the home button, it was a, it was a straight up circle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like on the iPhone where it's like rounded circles or rounded edges square. It was a circle. And I was like, well, that's kind of odd that they would change that. And then also, they have a customized iOS-like system. It's not iPod, it's not iOS, it's something in between. And they went from the rounded edges, squares, to circles. It's garbage. Who? Who? But Steve Jobs is dead. You can tell. You can tell, yeah. Obviously. The Nano was great. He has one right here. This, yeah. this is, we wanted a Bluetooth enabled this. Yeah, so that I could get my text messages. Yeah. I could get a quick shot of my email. Not some pocket translator. <laughs> I will say this, I stole this from Veronica Belmont. It was on BuzzFeed where she got it from. But basically there's a link and I'll put it up here. You can kind of see side by side. This is the iPod Nano. And this is a Samsung player from 2007 that looks very similar. And I thought he made a good point too when I showed it to him. He said, wow, I guess Apple's showing them a big F you now that the whole, you know, patent yeah. thing is kind of over. I mean, it's still going, but they're, you know, still at it. And they're like, ha ha, we can copy you from 2007, but you can't copy us from like 2005. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Yeah. It, it just it so looks so similar. That I'm never going to recommend the Nano to anyone. Not those. Ever. So let's move on to the because iPod. Now, yeah. Because now this is dead. Yeah. Because as you know, when they release a new product, those updates for everything else is gone. Yeah. That was a great thing. I, I still enjoy the old, uh, the Nano before this, which was still the old tall screen, which they were trying to go after, but they miffed it up really, 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 really bad. I kind of wish they would have went back to the scroll wheel and just gone scroll wheel and made it better again. But anyway. It looks cheap. It does. Speaking of cheap, let's move on to the iPod Touch, which was announced just after that. Mm -hmm. First thing, no white and black. It's just a white front face, and it's really, really, really super thin. It's even thinner than the previous fourth gen iPod Touch. I didn't know you could get thinner with this stuff. This is crazy, but problem is, you flip them over on the back, and then you're done. Because that is the most hideous thing. Yes, that right there. They're all pastel colors. It's it's back to the iPod mini days where they have the pink, the blue, the yeah. cyan, or whatever. All, I'm not good with colors. And the whole Roy G. Biv thing going yeah, on there. The, yeah, they have all that. So here's the thing. You see the little metal button right there? Zoom in. Yeah, that right there. You know what that is? It's something futuristic. <laughs> it's not a magnet for anything cool. It's a little <coughs> to pop out, so you can put a little <coughs> and have a wristband for your iPod Nano. Because we always walk down the street flailing this thing back and forth. Nobody uses an iPod anymore. <laughs> kids, should... kids use an iPod, and I, I don't think, care about the kids. I think this is where, and I and I I was watching the CNET live stream as this was going on. So this is this is I'm repeating. Uh, what was being said through Donald Bell, uh, Molly Wood, and Brian Tong off of CNET. But I agree with it. They're, they're pushing these towards the kids because an adult would not wear a strap with their iPod. You would never see a grown man do that. So the kids, they're flailing, they're flailing around. So yeah, they need a strap. All the pastel colors. Kids love colors. Easter eggs. Think about it. They love them. And the little the, the push button thing on the I, I, I don't know. It's then changed the brand to Apple Junior. 
release it for kids. Then the kids will tug at the mom, you know, I, you know, want this. But let the adults have the good looking things. The black, the white, the silver, the blue, the red. You know, keep it bold colors, not these lighter colors. <laughs> Apple Jobs marketing, did. did you hear that? Apple Jr. He said it. It was right here on this show first, TechStation.tv. And that's just a, that's another market you got right there. Yeah. That you don't have to alienate us. Yeah. I mean, I wish we're small potatoes compared to what, you know, <laughs> their stock is. But yeah, that's still revenue that's going to... You're not going to have anymore. So let's bring because it back. Because where's Coco Craigslist to buy the older 160 gig iPods that <laughs> were something? I still, and, I still, I still do want to get 160 because I have 120 right now, classic. I still kind of want to get that 160. It's just, I've got 160. You suck. Anyway, uh, so to wrap that all up into one quick bundle before we move on to the last story that we want to talk about, we knew about another announcement we did not want to skip over from Amazon, but. To wrap it all up, so for over the last two weeks, you've heard things from Nokia, Motorola, and now Amazon. So you've got three phones from Motorola, one that's available now, two that are unknown. Yeah. You've got two from Nokia, the 920 and the 820, which are, again, soon to be available sometime before the holidays or Christmas or maybe 2014. They might hold it out until then. We don't know because they haven't said anything. And then the Apple iPhone, which will be released starting after you watch this video. It will have already been be able to be pre-ordered, but they will be available next week on the 21st as they start going out to delivery. I think this time because of pre-orders, there won't be big lines like, like there used to be people going crazy. Because I remember watching the iPhone 4S release. News stations were going crazy going to these stores and there was like five people in line. Yeah, we learned that lesson hard with the iPad. iPad. <laughs> Those people don't get excited for anything. Yeah, so uh, news stations, we're telling you now, if you're watching this or you know someone who works for a news station, please tell them, do not send a crew on the 21st to an Apple store, to anywhere that's selling anything Apple, because there's not going to be lines. Everybody's going to be, they're going to be up at, you know, 2 a.m. Uh, Central, 3 a.m. Eastern, and then you figure it out from there, wherever you're at, uh, you know, at that time in the morning, pre-ordering so that they get them via FedEx or they get them via UPS. So, you know, don't go to the store and be a sucker and wait in line. Just let it come to you. Uh, this was a fail. Yeah, I agree. So, I'll be buying the Galaxy S3. Uh, by the time this next episode airs, I will probably have it in my hand. Rawr. So, anyway, moving past all cell phone news, one other major announcement which we wanted to talk about. Amazon Kindle was updated mm -hmm. to the next generation. We had three different versions of this. We have a new Amazon Kindle Fire. They've added double the memory and I think like a 20% upgrade in the processor. So, but they've dropped it down to $159. This is awesome. Yeah. Still the same rubber back, still the same screen, still seven inches, no camera, none of that stuff, but it's now it's 159 and it's faster. So I think I may sell my mother's Kindle Fire and get the upgraded one for $159. We'll see what happens. Then they also released the Kindle Fire HD. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. The whole uh, Motorola thing happening again here. <laughs> so they released the Kindle Fire HD. Better, better screen. This time, HDMI out. Yes, Dual. HDMI out. That's a big plus. It, it is. Not for everybody, but it is dual speakers this time because as you know the iPad has a stereo speaker as does the other Nook color and all the other ones and I'm pretty sure uh, the one from Galaxy Nexus by Google is probably a single speaker and so they're useless <laughs> anyway they got dual speaker technology with Dolby backing their speaker so it's gonna be good sounding I don't know yet I'm assuming this it's gonna be great sounding because you're having two speakers come at you instead of one you won't have to cup it as you're holding it, you know, trying to listen to the sound. So it'll be coming at you. It has an HD camera for front facing, it has no camera going out the back, just front facing for you to be able to Skype or Tango. Well, I don't know if Tango is available for the, uh, for the Kindle Fire as far as that uh, whole Amazon market, but you'll be able to do that. And it, it just looks great. It's like twice the processor. It's like twice the everything. It's better, blah, 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 blah whatever. So you've got the regular Kindle Fire for 159. This new Kindle Fire HD for 199 
it goes up to 32 gigs, so I think they have a 299 version. Mm -hmm. Then they stepped it up one more notch. They had the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch. So now you've got three brand new tablets all from Amazon out of pretty much nowhere because I don't think there were many leaks on this. I didn't see a thing about this beforehand. So now I knew uh, there I heard a new Fire. Yeah, but not three. we just yeah, we just thought it was going to be the second generation Kindle Fire. We were too busy looking at stupid back <laughs> photos and connector <laughs> photos and Anyway, so yeah, you've got three new Kindle Fires, but the best part of the whole deal was everybody knows Kindle only does wireless for the most part. There is the Kindle 3G and a couple of those that have the whisper sync over 3G and you never really have to pay for a data plan as long as you buy the hardware, blah, blah, whatever. And you had one at yeah, one whisper, point. Yeah, whisper sync was beautiful. Yeah, it's great. It, you know, sync your books, hit hit buy, it shows up on your Kindle whatever for the next five minutes. You can also check your email. Yeah, so <laughs> cool. Then Jeff Be Bezos, I believe is, is how you pronounce that, he goes, we wanted to think about this for a second. We have a 199 tablet and we have a 299 tablet. The number one best selling, and he admitted, tablet is 499, which he didn't say it, but mentioning the Apple iPad. Yeah. 499 at 16 gigs. So he said, what could we do that would, you know, make a 499 tablet? How would we come up with a 499 tablet? He said, we could double the memory. So he shows you the Kindle Fire HD in 32 gigs. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. He said, but that wasn't just enough. Let's put 4G LTE on this thing. And I was like, what? This is crazy. I was like, why would you need that for something that you use wirelessly? And I was like, well, you know what? Some people might want to use this in between going to work or in between going to school or in between wherever, you know, and you have that 4G LTE. Cool, that's awesome. How much is that gonna be? Get this, $50 for one entire year. $50 for an entire year for G LTE. But there is a caveat. It's, I think it's 120 or 200 megabytes each month that you're allotted. So it's not much when in comparison to other data yeah. plans. But again, look at it, $50 for 12 months of service. Think about it this way. How often are you around without Wi-Fi? In the car. That's about it. <laughs> and even in the car, some people can share Wi-Fi hotspots and give you their data, or there might be somewhere that you're parked next to, like you might ne be next to a McDonald's, a Starbucks, a Sweet CC's, uh, something or other that gives away free Wi-Fi. Shoot, I, gave, I give away Wi-Fi free at my apartment, and all you gotta do is sign up and you get your own account. But I mean, there's really not a lot of places left as far as in the suburban areas, not so much the rural areas. I know those of you that are out there that live out in nowhere, maybe 4G is your only option. So maybe the $50 a year isn't really you know useful for you unless you just check your email, your Facebook, and you might be good. But it's, it's an option and I think it's great. 50 bucks a year, 4G LTE, wherever I go so that when I leave the apartment and I'm not on my wireless, Mm -hmm. and I get to work and I get there and there's wireless. Then I go to the McDonald's next door. I don't, I don't even go to McDonald's. I don't know why I said that, but if I were to go to the McDonald's, whoever offers free Wi-Fi. Starbucks, hotels, sweet CCs, whatever, yeah. hotels, whatever. If you're in a rural area, is it no, suburban area, sorry, you're pretty much not gonna go anywhere without some sort of Wi-Fi. So I think 50 bucks a year for 100 or 200 megabytes a month is wonderful. And I seriously think well, after I get the Samsung Galaxy and I get my funds back together and back in order again, I'll probably end up getting the Kindle Fire HD. I don't know about with the 4G uh, because like I said, I go a lot of places with Wi-Fi and I'll have my Samsung to give out the free Wi-Fi or whatever. And I still have the grandfathered in unlimited plan. So we'll see what happens. And in the near future, we're also gonna see what happens to these grandfather plans with now pretty much every cell phone having LTE and I have that grandfather plan, I don't think they're gonna last much longer. <laughs> I think they're gonna go, whoa, he's using way too much 4G. And that was another thought was, think about now with all these iPhones coming out with LTE, how much slower the LTE network will become because it'll get flooded in the market with iPhone 5s that have LTE. You know what, I don't believe that whole flooded network theory. Really? 
No, I, I think it's just a thing that they can use to charge us more to use it. Which I'm sure uh, carriers love everybody buying this because they know that half these people that buy it are going to go over those oh, two yeah. gigs. I told you way about before, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Because this may be the first time that they buy a smartphone that has LTE. That has LTE and they just hit Netflix for some reason. Or their kid takes their phone and <laughs> plays an HD YouTube show or something. Yeah. And it just keeps going. Or they play us over and over. Yeah, why don't you do that? What's your, what's your problem? Uh, yeah, you can see. But well, yeah, I think just carriers love uh, They're going to love this. Here's, and also make these rules about, oh, you're flooding our network. No, we're not. I yeah. don't think we are at all. Yeah, I, I agree with you to that point. Here's another thing. Get this. This just came out just this today. So as you're watching this, you'll be able to go back and look. Sprint and Verizon. Because of iOS 6, you will be able to FaceTime over the cell phone network. Whereas before, you weren't able to do FaceTime on an iPhone or an iPod Touch, well, not now, <laughs> over a cell phone network. You always had to be on a Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, you can do it over 3G. Now you can do it over your 3G or 4G connection, depending on what you're doing, over based upon your carrier. Sprint and Verizon, they don't care. Do it all you want. We're not going to charge. AT&T, screw you and screw your mama. Because... Your mama, huh? Yes. I'm, this is getting personal. You are going to... They're going to charge... They're going to make you upgrade to the family tier data plan to get the FaceTime over 3G. That is ridiculous. That's another con. The family tier data plan. Yeah, that's all. So, <laughs> I see the commercials for them now. It, it's just sad. <laughs> what they're making you do. And still charging for Tether. Yeah. It, it's like you got to pay like $75 for the pool, first of all, of data. Mm -hmm. Then you have to pay $10 per device to access the pool to even get to it, even though you have it. And then there's like some other fee. There's like another fee that's like yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's like owning a pool. It's just a hole in your yard <laughs> you throw money into. Useless. So yeah, AT&T, if, if I can get over on the uh, free press site or uh, savetheinternet.com, if they're running some sort of petition to petition you guys for charging or making us upgrade to get FaceTime over 3G, I think I'll sign it and I'll pass it on to everybody because Sprint and Verizon aren't charging for it, dead gummit. I mean, Sprint literally just switched over to LTE. They were on WiMAX before. I, I really don't know where they just came up with this LTE all of a sudden. They literally just like... YMAX off, LTE on, and available in a whole crap ton of markets. So, but, and they're, well, they got, a, they got a lot of money, you know, the Cricket, Metro, all these little yeah. small carriers are renting off Sprint. Yeah, so true. that's just income. Yeah, it may you be. Take the, you can take the 3G towers and we'll <laughs> just pop another antenna on top of you. I don't know how 4G works. <laughs> you can just put an antenna on top of the other one. Uh, the only thing that sucks, though, is get this. And this will be the last thing that we talk about before we go. Like I said, it's kind of been a long-winded episode, but we wanted to get everything out there. So T-Mobile, lonely old little T-Mobile, out there by its lonesome, waving in the wind, not getting any new phones anytime soon. Nobody cares about them. But they got the fastest 4G because what's her face yeah, gets get on a, for a motorcycle. <laughs> she gets on a ninja, a Ducati. <laughs> Ducati takes off 900 miles and shows you they are the fastest. Which if you like, if you've ever read anything I put out, go to my website iknowrusty.com. Look it up. They are not the fastest. Their 4G is faux 4G. It's HSPA plus. It's not the fastest, but it is up there. I think it maxes out at like 21 megs or something like that. Or maybe 14.4. I forget what it is. But anyway, it's not the fastest. It's faux 4G. But anyway, T-Mobile went on the offensive. T-Mobile came out just a few days before and said, hey, hey, you guys, you guys over here with the iPhone 4s. You guys over here with the iPhone 4s. We got you. We got you. Come over to us with your unlocked phones. And we'll give you the best plans we could ever give you. We got them. They're unlimited. I said, what? Are you crazy? Yeah. John Travolta? <laughs> anyway, they basically put out a big thing that said, look, come bring your iPhone 4. Come bring your iPhone 4S. We'll give you better prices, better plans. They do have that. better prices. They do have better plans. Mm -hmm. Problem number one. 
they do not support LTE because they thought that they were going to be bought out by AT&T. iPhone 5 kind of washes out that whole idea. The iPhone 4S that you're going to bring over there is not really going to work the way you want it to. They have HSPA Plus in the iPhone 4S so that'll kind of work but it's really spotty for T-Mobile coverage and I actually went over this with one of the writers for CNET because I kind of went back and forth because I was like oh, I don't think it's gonna work at all he was like no, no no it'll work for HSPA plus so for HSPA plus which is their faux 4G it'll work problem their fallback that when you're not on 4G it doesn't go to 3G like it should <laughs> because T-Mobile's 3G does not match AT&T's Verizon's, Sprint's, anybody's. Yeah. Theirs was a completely different, you know, spectrum section. So it falls back to 2G, which is Edge. Remember edge. the E? Remember I still get it sometimes, and I feel like throwing my phone out the window. <laughs> I still get the E going from here to Chattanooga, about halfway down, going to Manchester, boom, E. And I'm like, seriously? It's 2012. It's like when I get a roaming, <laughs> roam, <laughs> on my Sprint, Sprint here, I get to Kentucky. You're now roaming. <laughs> I thought that went away with the 90s. <laughs> roaming. So yeah, for those of you wanting to get an iPhone on T-Mobile, go find you, go get yourself a 1S, I believe it is. Uh, one of our friends actually uh, from my other show, his wife actually got the 1S. Go get you a, a really good phone. Don't get the iPhone and downgrade it and bring it over to T-Mobile. Just don't. It, it means the HTC, not like yeah, iPhone, H not yeah. iPhone made a 1S. Yes, yes, correct. <laughs> HTC 1S, I'm sorry. Uh, get you one of those. It's a really great phone. It's really big screen. Works great. It has the radios in it that will work and will fall back to their 3G and not the 2G. So yeah, if you're thinking about getting an iPhone and going to T-Mobile, I recommend against it. Yeah. I really, really do because you're going to have really slow connections. So that's pretty much it. Anything else that we want to add other than what we've covered? No, I think we've, uh, if anybody's still left, Bless yeah, you. if you're still watching, thank you very much. We pretty much stopped watching as well right now in our heads. <laughs> um, no, I think we covered it. Um, we've given you pretty good information here. Four phones out right now that you can choose from, and we dog the, the this iPhone five a lot. But if it's your first introduction, and you want to do it. We're not telling you not to. We're if the saying, iPhone four S was your first phone, go for the iPhone five. You know. Or if the iPhone 4 was your first phone. The problem is when iPhone came out, there were no competitors with it. Yeah. Now, there's a lot. Yeah, so... so just uh, shop wisely. Keep tuned to us. We'll, if something changes, we'll if let you, you know. If you have a question about services or anything, please come to us. We know about this stuff. I mean, he used to sell the stuff for AT&T. I just know the stuff because I'm in it every day, like white on rice and flies on poop so <laughs> I, I know the stuff inside out I know more about it than the sales reps at the store know about it I actually told a guy today did you know the Lumia 920 was coming to your network soon he's like oh really I didn't know and I was like see that's my point because he answered a Craigslist <laughs> <laughs> they don't train anybody in any of those stores. So anyway, if if you've forgotten, we wanted to remind you, don't forget, we're going to be at GMX coming up uh, in October. We're going to be there 26, 27, 28th, I believe is the Yeah, 26 thing. through 28. So we're going to be at GMX. Make sure you check out the website, whatisgmx.com. Uh, all sorts of things. I had a promo that I forgot to save, and I'm supposed to say right here, but sorry about that, guys. Uh, in the next episode I will because we know the next episode will be shorter I will put that in there so just check it out what is gmx.com we will be there alongside other many other shows many other things Veronica Belmont will be there from Techzilla from Revision 3 uh, Billy West from Futurama and other known yeah. well-known shows will be there a uh, lot of other names uh, that I can't think of right off the top of the hand. Those are just the two major ones I can think of. My other show will be there. My comedy podcast, we will be there. We will be there as a conglomerate. So come hang out with us if you're in the Nashville area. Send us well wishes, whatever it is. What is gmx.com? We will be there. Come by, hang out with us. We do have a super secret thing coming out in the near future, but we're not ready to announce it. But just to kind of put you on the edge of things, we have kind of a super secret something coming brewing in the future. And uh, we actually, actually two things in one, but uh, we're gonna make it one announcement. So yeah. as, as we decide to let you know, we do got something. But in the meantime, uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, hit us up. 
put them down there. Anything, even if you hate us, I mean, go to our last couple ep episodes ago. Uh, this guy just told us pretty much to die. We love it. <laughs> Bring it. YouTube.com slash TextNation TV. Shows you're watching. Shows you care. <laughs> YouTube.com slash TV. You can subscribe there. You can like each video. It goes out to your Twitter if you connect to it. You can share us on your Facebook. You can share us pretty much anywhere. Just check it out. YouTube.com slash TV. Yeah, hit that thumbs up. Even if you don't like it, just hit, just click the thumbs up. You need up to hit it more often. And leave. <laughs> yeah, I need to do a lot of things. <laughs> like. Go to Facebook.com slash TV and add us as a friend. Yeah, you can do all sorts of things there with Facebook as well. You can share our articles. You can like them. You can pass them on. You can do whatever. Do us a favor. Tell some friends if they if they don't really want all the news, because I kind of do flood the market with news constantly almost every day. If you don't like that, do me a favor. Go like the page. At least we can get our numbers up. Mm -hmm. And then unsubscribe from the feed. Take that out of your feed. That way it's not there. I mean, you won't be up to date with the latest news. But if you're in, if you're in the tech and products, we we try to keep you informed better than we do in person. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I kind of do flood the market with our Facebook stuff, which goes to our Twitter. So, follow, you know, which leads me to my next thing: Twitter.com/slash/TextNationTV. You can follow us there. You can uh, see everything that we post. Uh, it's basically going to be everything from our Facebook stuff, and it'll have Facebook links, and you can go read the latest stuff. Uh, we try to link out to all the other places. We're not, you know, into one website. We're into 30 websites. We read everything that we can. We can get our hands on. You can send us direct messages. Do whatever. Just follow us at TextNationTV. Hey, Pinners out there, <clears throat> those people who are still around, Pinterest.com <laughs> slash TextNationTV. Is that a thing still? Are people still doing that? I don't think it's as... Uh, people are, but it's not like blown Big. up as it was a four or five months ago. But people are still coming to our page, following us, taking our photos, putting them somewhere else, you know. Well, you keep that up to date because I'm never going to touch it with a 20 foot pole. Uh, also, for those of you on Google Plus, because I also keep that up to date as well, gplus.to slash section nation TV. You can add us to your circles. Please spread the word. Uh, get us out there to your friends. Same thing if you want to add us into your circles. I don't know if there's like an unsubscribe button in Google Plus because the same stuff, again, the same stuff that goes to Facebook, Twitter goes to Google Plus as well. So everything that goes there, it's all there. Please add us to your circles. Tell us, tell us, you know, tell your friends. If you have tech buddies, if you have a tech circle that you think that we would be good for for other news circles, let's see if we can't get together and make a really cool circle of, uh, I don't know, other tech people. I, I can't really come up with anything. Just try to prove to Google that, oh, let's try this Hangout thing that <laughs> everybody we may We may do a Hangout in the future, and that's not part of our super secret announcement, but we may do a Hangout in the future. So gplus.to slash TV, And because I fixed it, it's I fixed it for like a day. Yeah, it looked good. I, yeah, I it was back. It wasn't bad. For like a day. Yeah. Techstation.tv. But the only thing that's going to be there for right now is just a black backdrop and the two latest, either the episode or a text minute. You don't so, have a cover flow anymore? <laughs> anyway, so... Oh, they didn't make it this far. Really. Right now, textnation.tv works. You can see the two latest episodes of whatever, Text Nation Full and then the Text Nation Text, Nation text Minute. Check us out there. You can find him... Twitter.com slash text Allen. Hit him at Ruck Text. Man, we said Text Nation a lot today. Twitter.com. Twitter.com slash. Slashed. <laughs> Let's just end it. We'll see, we'll, we'll see you again for episode number 51. Thanks for watching if you made it this far.